tonight. Our special transmission as the U.S. urges an investigation over the treatment of imprisoned Palestinian leader Marwan Barakouti. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahar Sayed. Today is the 173rd day since the onset of Israel's war. Palestinian Health Ministry reports in the t- past 24 hours, at least 62 Palestinians have been killed in what it terms as six massacres by Israeli forces. 91 have been injured. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says since Monday, Israeli strikes have killed nearly 160 Palestinians and injured 195. Euromed Human Rights Monitor accuses Israeli forces of directly targeting and executing 13 children. The casual, child casualties include 9-year-old Ali and 6-year-old Saeed Muhammad Sheikha. They were both shot dead near Al Shifa Hospital. Disturbing video footage has surfaced revealing Israeli forces' fatal shooting of unarmed Palestinian men. The men were attempting to return to their homes in northern Gaza, and the clip depicts two Palestinians holding white pieces of cloth, posing no threat to the nearby Israeli forces. The Israeli forces gunned them down and buried them under sand with a military bulldozer. Another Palestinian journalist, Mohammed Abu Sakhil, has been killed by Israeli forces at Al Shifa Hospital. This brings the toll of journalists killed in Gaza over the past five months to 138. In Lebanon, at least nine civilians have been killed by Israeli strikes as tensions rise with Hezbollah. The death toll from Israel's war is staggering. At the time of writing, Israeli attacks have killed 32,000 490 Palestinians. A report by UN estimates another 8,000 Palestinians are buried under the rubble. 74,889 Palestinians have been injured. Israel's revised death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is facing tension within his coalition government over proposed legislation exempting ultra-Orthodox Jews from military service. Netanyahu insists on passing the controversial draft law despite opposition within his Likud party and from secular factions. The exemption violates principles of equality. The deadline for government action is looming. Coalition partners, particularly ultra-Orthodox parties, threaten to leave the coalition if forced enlistment proceeds. Meanwhile, Defense Minister Yov Gallant disavows the exemption bill. Opposition leader Yair Leped condemns the government's stance. He is urging immediate enlistment of 10,000 Orthodox Jews amid urgent military needs. An Israeli newspaper says the Israeli army urgently requires 7,000 soldiers for its war in Palestine. Half of these are intended for combat roles. Israel's chief Sephardic rabbi Yitzhak Yosef says if ultra-Orthodox Jews are forced to serve in the military, all of them would leave the country. The Biden administration has expressed concerns over the treatment of Palestinian leader Marwan Barghouti in Israeli custody. Barghouti is a Palestinian political figure convicted for murder by an Israeli court. He has been sentenced to five life terms in prison. He is regarded as a leader of the first and second intifadas. He was arrested in 2002 in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Barhouti's family claims since October 7th he has suffered abuse, including solitary confinement and bruises. The Israeli prison service denies mistreatment. The Washington Post reports the State Department is urging Israel to investigate allegations of physical and psychological mistreatment. The U.S. opposes Barghouti's release amid negotiations for a hostage deal with Israel. Barghouti is a former leader of Fatah's armed wing and is one of the most popular political figures in Palestine. His potential release will be a significant development for Hamas. Analysts say Barghouti can act as a unifying force between Hamas and Fatah. However, it can pose challenges for Israel's policy. U.S. President Joe Biden's plan to establish a maritime aid corridor between Cyprus and Gaza is stirring concerns. The corridor is meant to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza. It faces opposition from both Israel and Egypt. 
The proposal is supported by Western leaders. The plan includes inspecting aid in Cyprus before transporting it to Gaza, bypassing Israeli checkpoints. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu views the corridor as a means to facilitate the exit of Palestinians from Gaza. Osama Gawish, editor-in-chief of Egypt Watch, says the establishment of this corridor could reshape regional dynamics. He says the maritime corridor will cause Egypt to lose its strategic advantage regarding the Palestinian issue. He is urging the Egyptian government to reject the idea of this corridor and open the Rafah crossing immediately to allow the entry of aid by land. A human rights advocate within the U.S. State Department has resigned because of President Biden's Israel policy. Anel Shaleen's departure marks the latest in a series of resignations following the internal dissent over the administration's stance. With, it, with the death toll in Gaza rising and famine looming, Shaleen says it is impossible for her to advocate for human rights. Shaleen was tasked with promoting human rights and compiling annual reports on the issue. Experts say Shaleen's resignation shows decreasing U.S. influence globally. Despite promises of support, the Biden administration has refrained from condemning Israeli actions at the U.N. While Shaleen is being praised for her courage by human rights activists, she says she fears repercussions for her future career. Earlier, Josh Paul, a director in the Bureau of Political Military Affairs, resigned from his position. Darek Habash from the Department of Education followed in his footsteps. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told a group of U.S. lawmakers that the military offensive on Rafah, southern Gaza, is crucial for Israel's security. Briefing a bipartisan group of Congress, he said victory was near. The congressional delegation was organized by the pro-Israel lobbying group American Israel Public Affairs Committee. The delegation met Netanyahu in Jerusalem. Netanyahu has told the delegation that displaced Palestinians in Gaza could just move out of Rafah with their tents. U.S. officials, including Secretary of State Antony Blinken, are urging Israel to seek alternatives to avoid civilian casualties and worsening the humanitarian crisis. Canada's Liberal government is ramping up deportations, contradicting promises to accommodate more migrants. Over the past two years, more than 23,000 undocumented migrants have been deported. This marks the highest deportation rate since 2012. The deportation costs are around $111 million. Sayed Hassan, executive director of Migrant Workers Alliance for Change, says it is of no use to spend so much money deporting people while the government is working on a regularization program. Advocates are urging a deportation pause while a comprehensive regularization program is devised. Dr. Lamia Ben Gemma Education Fund has been unveiled this week, a significant initiative introduced by Dr. Ben Gemma's family. The fund is meant to empower and advance education opportunities for the Muslim community in Canada. The fund seeks to reach a goal of $840,000 in donations with contributions from the community. Dr. Lamia Benjema arrived in Canada from Tunisia in 1984 after securing a scholarship from the Canadian International Development Agency's Technology Transfer Program. Dr. Benjema earned her master's and PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Toronto. Later, she was appointed as a professor at Seneca College. She held leadership roles, such as chairperson of the managing board at Olive Grove School and manager of Al Huda Schools. Dr. Ben Gemma lost her battle to cancer last year in September. She generously donated $840,000 from her estate to support Max Education Initiatives. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not for profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.